Thanks for staying with us. Still on insecurity matter cutting across Africa. The United Nations Security Council meeting 2021 was held as a video teleconferencing debate on May 19 with a focus on peace and security in Africa. The United States Ambassador to United Nations, Linda Thomas Greenfield, addressed the press as a build-up to the meeting. Osaroge Ogwanwa has more. The United States Ambassador to the United Nations, Linda Thomas Greenfield, says food security in northern Nigeria would be a focus in the Security Council meeting. Greenfield told a digital press briefing ahead of the UN Security Council meeting entitled Peace and Security in Africa, addressing root causes of conflict while promoting post-pandemic recovery, that South Sudan, Yemen and northern Nigeria had been identified as highly food insecure because of insecurity. So this is a very high priority for us. We will be actively engaging uh, in uh, the discussions that will take place uh, later uh, in the year. Uh, as you have noted, South Sudan and Yemen uh, particularly have been identified uh, as being uh, very highly food insecure because of insecurity. And we know that the situation in Ni Northern Nigeria is one that we need to focus attention on. But there are also other areas in, in the world where food insecurity is leading to uh, conflict and conflict is leading to uh, food uh, insecurity. Ambassador Thomas Greenfield also spoke of efforts to assist in training Nigeria's security forces to be more effective while reducing cases of human rights abuse as well as the challenge of kidnappings in Nigerian schools that had become a problem even beyond the country. For, for that question, and it is an issue that we continue uh, to work uh, with uh, the Nigerian uh, government on. Uh, we have called the government out when we have seen uh, violations being uh, committed. Uh, but we also, at the same time, try to provide assistance and train and equip law enforcement uh, and um, other professionals to address uh, some of, uh, of these issues and uh, to address uh, 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 shortcomings that uh, that they may have. Linda Thomas Greenfield says the United States was committed to partnering with Africa to bring hope. While the political leadership should make firm commitment towards human security centered security and protection. Now, gender-based violence, GBV, is most pervasive yet least visible human rights violation in the world, which includes physical, sexual, mental, and economic harm inflicted on a person because of socially ascribed power imbalances between males and females. In this report, the Lagos State Government, in collaboration with international partners, has launched a toll-free line to provide services to victims of sexual and gender-based violence. Aneta Felix has more. Behind me are representatives of the European Union, the United Nations, Commission of Health, Commission of Women Affairs, Commission of Justice, Commission of Police, as well as the wife of the Vice President and the First Lady of Lagos State, as well as other top government functionaries. They're here in Alausa, Lagos, to launch a free 24-hour toll line and a referral system, and that's to help in ending sexual and gender-based violence in Lagos. At the peak of the coronavirus lockdown, the Lagos State's Domestic and Sexual Violence Response Team recorded a 60% increase in domestic violence, 30% rise in sexual violence, and 10% increase in physical child abuse. Auditor General, Lagos State Ministry of Justice, Titela Yoshitabe, explains that these grim figures are part of what inspired the creation of a virtual response and referral system to provide 24-7 access to free health care, legal and psychological support to victims of domestic and sexual-based violence. We provide uninterrupted access to GBV services by enabling survivors have access to trained service providers. Representing the Commissioner of Police, Hakim Odumosu, CSP Gladys Saniyi assures the public that the police will prosecute offenders reported through the new platform. She also names 11 approved locations to report cases of sexual and gender-based violence. One, we have 
a lack of court division. So those of them who stays within that as is, you can walk into a lack of court divisions and make your report. Two, we have K2 division. We have Aja division. We have one in Ikeja. We have one at Ikotu. Commissioner for Justice and Chairman DSVRT, Muyoshori Onigwanju, assures Nigerians to take advantage of the new platform, assuring that the Lagos state government is instituting laws to back up their efforts. The Domestic and Sexual Violence Response Agency will become law in about two weeks' time. Many cases of sexual, gender and domestic-based violence go unreported in Nigeria due to the stigma surrounding it. But a virtual, free and accessible toll line like this one could be a game-changer in the fights for a gender-equal world. Aneta Felix, PLOS TV Africa. Well, such a good step, I must say, which will help women, girls and boys from being violated. Now, this one is on the need for inclusive education. There has been a renewed call to create more awareness and support for inclusive education as it is the best way to ensure the rights of those living with disabilities are ensured. A group made this call during one of their advocacy visits to a secondary school in Lagos. Take a look. Like all children, those with disability need quality education to develop their skills and realize their full potential. Here in St. Joseph Secondary School, the students assemble to give audience and support to their visitors, Festus Fajamilo Foundation. They are on a mission tagged, We Ring the Bell, an advocacy and awareness campaign on the rights to education of children with disabilities. Lagos State Government, uh, among other states, has 44 inclusive, uh, public inclusive schools, 31 primary and 13 secondary. And we want, a lot of people still don't know, a lot of citizens in the state still don't know that these schools are you know, in existence. And so many children with disabilities are still locked up at home. So we're using this program to sensitize the communities uh, where schools that we collaborate with are located. There's supposed to be an access for the people with disabilities. Okay. Where they want to enter the class, where they want to enter the hall, where they want to enter the offices, there's supposed to be an access for them, just like it has been operated in, oh, I mean, in other countries of the world. Children with disability also have the right for quality education. They, they need to be included in the mainstream education. Some of the school's children share useful insights as to what they have learned. As a member of the group, Ajiboye Oluwatike gave a rendition of a song. Schools should try and encourage them to come to their schools. Not, don't make them feel like they are not wanted in the society. From this event, I was able to understand that we should be able to aid and help the physically challenged in any way we find us, in any way we find them in our environment. I would like to say to those that have disability that they should be encouraged. They should not let anything pull down their self-esteem. I'm the thief to fly, fly, yeah, yeah, yeah. fly, yeah, yeah, yeah. fly, yeah, yeah. I'm the thief to fly. An estimated 93 million children worldwide live with disabilities. Like all children, those with disabilities have ambitions and dreams for their future and need all support and care they can get. Now, inclusive education is the most effective way to give all children a fair chance to go to school and, and develop the skills they need to thrive. It's a wrap now, but before we go, let's do please remind you to follow us at Plus TV Africa on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram. And to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. I'm Jacinta Ubiuku. Thanks for watching.